Hey lovely sexy hobby people, welcome to today's video which is Warhammer Stormbringer issue 48 and it is Boingrot Bounders. <clears throat> so cool. They look cool. Right, let's have a look, shall we? Straighten up the camera. Now then, Boingrot Bounders, Alariel the Ever Queen, and a new battle plan. Alariel the Ever Queen. Alariel the Ever Queen is the mother goddess of life. She is the creator of the Sylvanet, who she grew from soul pods saved from the world that was. Power radiates from her being, an aura of life energy that cleanses and restores the land as she passes over it. When faced with opposition, she directs her wrath towards those who would thwart her mission of renewal. There you go. So, Mother Nature then in everything but name, I suppose. She looks badass. During the Age of Chaos, chaos Alariel fought against the forces of darkness. Nurgle took particular delight in perverting and corrupting her home of Giran. Alariel and the Sylvaneth fought death Desperate battles against the plague god's vile legions as they spread pestilence and rot throughout the realm. So she's not a fan of Nurgle then. After battling the Gash, Alariel performed the Rite of Life. Under ferocious attacks from Nurgle's beastmen, she sang a spirit song at the base of the Oak of Ages Past. Protected by her forces, the dead oak was restored to life and drank from the blood of the beastmen and the Sylvaneth who fell in battle. The power of the oak joined the power of the spirit song and the wave, and the wave of life energy flowed out to all the realms, changing and revitalising them. Okay. Does she have does she have a miniature in Age of Sigma? Nature's Gambit Part Two, so some more fiction, and then the Boingrot Bounders. These look really cool. They do look fun. Um, they've got lances. By the look of it. So you get a D6 rolling chart for boss traits. And you get a D6 rolling chart for unit traits. And it says here, units of Boingrot bounders are composed of the rare few grots who survive a battle as a squeak hopper. Swaggering with self-importance, these experienced warriors are only too keen to jump back on a squig while wielding a fearsome poking lance to show the other grots how it's done. Um... Okay, these are going to be fiddly by the look of it. So we get our how to build. And these are going to be super fiddly to build. Because it looks like they're multi-parts, even just for basic body assembly. <clears throat> so this looks like there's six different faces for the, for the squigs. <clears throat> and you get six different heads for the grots, five lances and five, are they shields? Oh no, they're the um, ovuli and, uh, is it ovuli? Uv uvula, uvula, um, uh, at the back of the throat and tongue for the squigs. <clears throat> so you get five of those. But yeah, multi, multi part. Uh, 
um, minis here. So we'll build a couple. Uh, then we're coming into our how to paint. So you're basing in Abaddon black and some parts Corax white, but then you've got Barracknar burgundy for things like the tongue uh, and the gums. Uh, corn red for the body and the squigs, green for the grots. Yeah, cool. Boing grot bounders, right. So it's a D6 plus seven inches. So you roll a D6 and then add seven inches. So you could actually have a 13 inch move. They have two wounds, they've got four up save, and they've got five bravery. Poking Lance has a two inch range, two attacks, four plus to hit, three plus to wound, it's minus one rend and one damage. And then a fang field gob, so that'll be the squigs, have a one inch ranged attack. They have three attacks, uh, it's four plus to hit, three plus to wound, minus one rend and one damage. Each model in a Boing Rock Bounders unit is armed with a poking lance. This unit can fly. Okay. <clears throat> That's an interesting thing. All scroll tutorials, Boing Smash. Boing Smash allows your Boing Grot Bounders to do extra damage when they charge. After charging, pick an enemy unit within one inch of your Boing Grot Bounders. This will usually be the enemy you've just charged. Then roll a dice for each Boing Grot Bounder. For each roll of four, five or six, the enemy unit suffers a mortal wound. Realm Scout, ride them down. <clears throat> so that's the new battle plan. So, the forces of order have come across a rain slick valley in Shamon, or Camon. We need to decide how we're pronouncing that. Uh, that leads to the nearest realm gate. If they are able to secure this valley, the scouting party in Camon will be able to draw more reinforcements from the Dawnbringer Crusade in Gur. Unfortunately, the forces of destruction have the same idea and have converged on the valley ready for battle. So your army list for the Alliance of Order is going to consist of, must consist of, the Knight Arcanum, Knight Judicator with Griffhound, Stormstrike Chariot and Five Tree Revenants. And then option one, you can either have Guard of Steel Soul and the Branch Witch, or option two, five Vindictors and six Griffhounds. And then the Alliance of Destruction, the destruction shamans have told the bosses of a deep valley that was carved by a rampaging mega gargan in the distant past. While tales of this mega gargan's exploits have kept the troops entertained, the valley itself forms a direct path to a realm gate leading to the realm of beasts to bring in more of their forces and to prevent the stormcast doing the same. The bosses have ordered the valley to be seized. <coughs> And your compulsory army list for Alliance of Destruction is Killer Boss with Stab Grot, Swamp Kala, Shaman and Pop Grot, Ten Gut Rippers and Five Boing Grot Bounders. And then option one is Manok the Cunning and Beast Skewer Kilbo. And option two is the Cunning Crew and Marsh Crawler Slogoth. <coughs> So you're using all three of your battle mats that you've collected so far. Three objective markers placed in a diagonal from top left to bottom right. And your deployments are the short board edges. And then we have Ian and Eve's playthrough. <coughs> Right, come down, let's have a look at the plastic. 
So you get 32 mil round bases with this. <clears throat> and it's a sculpt of 2019. So yeah, like I said, this is massively multi-part. Um, so you've got your lances, one, two, three, four, and five here. And then all your squig faces are in halves, so you'll need to marry those up. So my advice would be, make all of these sub-assemblies first, like your squig faces, and then make up all of your squig bodies and grot bodies, etc. <clears throat> It looks like you're going to have some weapons left over because it looks like they have some close combat melee weapons as well. So you've got like a sickle, a sword, sword, uh, a like, like an ice pick, um, a mace, a sword, <clears throat> and yeah, squig bodies, one, two, three, four, five squig bodies which you basically looks like you're going to be adding the legs to. Um, so you're going to have one leg which is supporting it uh, above the ground here. So they're either going to be on mushrooms or what looks like maybe a little steam cloud or something. Um, and then you have your other leg, which goes on the other side. So one, three, four, five there. Mostly mushrooms, but they're kind of held on. Yeah, but I mean, they look good. These look like they're going to locate in really well because they've got like a triangular lug, which is just going to slot straight into those bases without any issues, out into, into these bodies without any major issues. Uh, tongues? Or are they... Oh no, they're hats. So these are the heads. Heads for our grots. So you can either have the hooded head or there are helmeted with what look like or potentially helmeted with various spikes etc um, I can't really tell but they look great so this is interesting what are these then so it looks like we're going to get plenty of parts left over. And I'd be interested to see what they are. Cool. All right, let's get a couple built, shall we? Come back in a sec. So... We're going to build a um, bog standard squig rider to begin with. Um, and what I would recommend is actually gluing the first leg to the base and then like gluing a couple of the other sub assemblies so that this has an opportunity to go off. Um, so your squig, this is the bottom, this is his belly, this bit, when you build him, um, and your legs just slot in. Now I, I tried messing about with some of the other legs and they, they mostly seem, <coughs> excuse me, they mostly seem to um, happily port across to different squigs but you may need a you know just a slight bit of filling or even just a slight bit of um, sanding in order to get them to um, go off together 
Now this, I believe, is going to go in there, like so. So this will be an important one to glue, this rider, because he's literally just got a small piece of his arm that's attaching with the glue. So you're going to want that to go off. Um, before you get to it and placing it on the squig. Just in case there's any contact points there. Okay, and I just set that aside to, to dry. Another thing that needs building up is the head and jaw bone. And all of these are different, and you get different faces for the squigs. Unless you're building the boss then he has specific parts. So another thing that you can actually glue on is the inside of the mouth. So that can be glued on whilst you're just waiting for stuff to dry. Um, anyway, then you're going to marry up your leg like so. So that you end up with a squig body like this. Then your squig rider goes on. And the way that they've done this is actually really good. Um, that's not gone on the way it needed to go on. So that's a bit better. You've, they leave a dimple at the top for the squig rider to just attach to like thus um, I'm actually going to go because this, this guy looks like he's mostly seated so. and then that is held in place by the face and there is quite a prominent seam line around the face, which if you just saturate slightly with the glue, and push it in, you can almost eliminate it. But then the head goes in. And the spear and you can you can, if you want to have your squig your rider with the spears up you can or if you want them 
out in kind of like a jousting position kind of thing then you can just play around with the angle so that's your basic squig and then we've got our squig herd squig boss squig rider boss here Does look like there's there's a like a brand in in that leg, which maybe signifies that this is the the loon boss's um, squig. I just pop the tongue in. Now, this chap is in one piece. So, but the squig face that goes on the um, on this particular squig is three parts. this kind of armoured jaw that goes in and there are places for it there are it is um, some slots for it to go into but obviously it's just getting it into position and then putting the Glue in. So, face. Now, if we come in and start. Gluing our squig together. Like so. Now, there is a slight difference with the, the loon boss. The squig boss, the herd boss, don't know what you would specifically call them, um, in that he has a fancy helmet. up with that so he's got a bit of an armored jaw and an armored, armored prowl now this guy's helmet um, when you put it on so it says this obviously goes on the standard like so but then there is this that goes on top and just working out in the way. 
So there you go. So there you go. <laughs> Great helmet. Um, and then obviously we've got the usual spear. And that is your boss.